Yeah, so I think so. This is on marine uh, brightening, and um, yeah, even though Daniel couldn't make it, I just you know it's just important to have it here because I think it's one of the the, uh, the real options out there. So um, yes, yeah, so there's a picture of Daniel. In fact, he got himself uh, in the newspaper yesterday too. If you want to go, if you want to read that, it's actually quite a good um, article, I have to say. So uh, yeah, so the question for today is um, yeah, and so just to give the caveat that, that this isn't my expertise. As it gets towards the end of it, I can give you a bit more feedback when it comes to the uh, ocean interactions. Uh, but we do actually have Zoran here, who is a uh, atmospheric chemist, and so you can actually ask questions about that component between the two of us. Let's see how we go. So, um, yes. Uh, so yeah, so first of all, uh, Daniel is definitely a, a guy who wants to, uh, so I'm trying to channel, channel him here, he, he does like to motivate his talks very much so, so that is quite familiar to you, but um, he's uh, yeah, looking at um, obviously just the warming over the, the next couple of decades and how um, obviously that's motivating this whole uh, area of research. And probably keen to emphasise, uh, like the last speaker, that we really see these as the solutions while we get our act together um, on carbon emissions. Okay, so on to the, the problem of um, at hand. So uh, clouds and aerosols. So clouds um, um, over the ocean are often uh, limited, so the formation of clouds is limited by the uh, concentration of uh, these cloud nuclei, I think he's got the cloud condensation nuclei. And, um, so if we can have more of them, then we'll brighten, brighten the clouds, and the brighter clouds will have a greater albedo, reflecting the light back out, resulting in less <coughs> warming of the surface water, but also potentially, uh, but also less light reaching the corals. Uh, in this talk, we're just going to go through the effect on temperature, um, but in future work, we are going to consider that reduced uh, solar radiation making it to the seabed. Okay, so um, every drop in a cloud forms a tiny nano-sized particle um, and so that's these cloud condensation nuclei and the, um, yeah, the aerosols can come from many different sources but over the ocean they're often formed by these salt crystals and actually this next slide is pretty amazing. They, um, the, um, yeah, no, this has been taken, so people have considered this process on a global scale um, and so that's partly what Daniel was able to look at the research that's been done there and how they thought about forming these salt sprays. Um, yeah, so the final point is quite interesting. How it's believed that uh, it'd be quite effective in cooling the whole planet if you did a big enough um, injection of this, um, offsetting up to double the CO2. But that's at a global scale, that's not what we're considering here. Okay, so um, I'll just bring it all up. Um, yeah, can we cool the, the waters of the GBR? And so, um, yeah, it's, it's amazing how little you need to put into the atmosphere to get a cooling effect. So, um, uh, you, you put out these, these so it's these sea salt aerosols, they result in this um, dr uh, cloud droplet, right? But the actual amount that you put into the atmosphere is tiny to the volume that you, of droplets that you've made in the clouds, because all you're providing is the nuclei, not the um, not the, the water that's coming out of the atmosphere. Um, and so, and you also get a big um, wind with the reflection that's going to come up in the Nicholas next slide. Sorry. Um, yeah, and I think this is an intrinsically scalable one in that, um, you know, we know how much, um, you know, how, how many places we'd have to have this salt spray in order to get it to cover a large area. So that's going to be the next slide. And so it uses existing technology too. So snow machines are the device that um, of choice here. And so obviously you can just buy them off the shelf. And it's actually about adjusting the nozzle um, to get a different, um, you know, from a, where you're trying to make snow as opposed to making a, uh, uh, these, these clouds. So where you're trying to brighten these clouds. So yeah, the Sitsuki's got there. So you'd only need 400 nozzles. Um, yeah, 120 trillion aerosols from 1.6, only 1.6 litres um, per second. And so the reason it's doing that is because 
when you I guess the next slide's going to have it. No. Uh, when you uh, when when you spray this water, what happens is is the the, um, the you're spraying out the salt water, but because you make the particles so fine when they come out, the um, the, the water evaporates and you're left just with the crystal, right? And so that's and so that's how you're making a lot of the uh, a lot of particles for a small amount of water. Okay, so um, so of course why we're doing this is to increase the albedo of the atmosphere so that the heat's not even getting to the ocean. And so three effects. So there's a direct effect. So that's just the fact that these salt particles are scattering. And so if, 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 if um, radiation hits them, <coughs> the component will scatter back up. And, um, uh, and so estimates of that direct effect are um, a relatively small, 0.07 to 0.1. So that's a, a fraction, right? So you can now read as a fraction between 0 and 1. And so by, uh, you, you've only increased it by, well, 10% off. Uh, so, um, so anyway, so there's, there's a small direct effect, but uh, probably the idea of cloud brightening is that we're going for the indirect effect, which is that we form more clouds. Um, and so those clouds that are then formed have a, um, you know, the estimate is that they can increase the albedo by um, 0.1 to 0.2, so more significant than the effect of the particles alone. And then a um, second indirect effect um, is you actually get, so not just do you change the albedo of the clouds, but you change the volume of the clouds as well. So you can see the second figure there that the morphology of the clouds actually changed. So we've got a few effects here that are all working towards increasing the albedo, less light gets into the water. Okay, so uh, people have looked at this from a uh, global scale, and so, um, so that's a change in radiator forcing um, in one, this is someone else's study, obviously. Uh, just to note with the colour bar that um, uh, that it's mostly <coughs> the green bits, the only, that's only positive bits. So generally, this is a negative on the sea surface temperature or on the surface temperature. Uh, and actually, that um, that some uh, regions, including the GBR, uh, have a bigger effect than others. Okay, and so that, this is just a global study. So we'll ask ourselves why that is. And so, uh, why? Okay, so it's, so what makes a good location for cloud brightening? So, firstly, you need clouds, right? So this, so this is not about forming new clouds or forming rain, which are other types of seeding that, are, that these technologies use, but rather it's about um, brightening the clouds. And so you need these clouds in the first place. And in fact, you need the low-lying ones, not the higher ones in the atmosphere. Um, a low existing concentration of suitable aerosols, because of course if you already had a high concentration, then injecting more wouldn't help, right? So it's in regions where you have uh, low existing aerosols. And then the third one is, of course, when you're near the equator, um, you've got more sunlight, so the actual albedo, of course, is not affected that by that, but the amount of cooling that you get from that location for that change in albedo does. Okay, so um, so here's just uh, some images. So this is from the Access R, the Bureau of Meteorology's reanalysis of atmospheric conditions. And so we've got monthly means. So on the left, four panels. That's December, January, February, March of 2015-16, and then 2016-17 on the right. Uh, and you can see actually there's quite a variability in the amount of cloud that's there for which uh, this cloud. Uh, brightening is going to work off, um, but notably that in um, you know 2015-16, you can see in February there was um, yeah, there was a low low level of cloud uh, in particular, and so that bleaching. If you remember, I think there'd be people in the room like Craig Steinberg or others who might tell you that that was um, the difference between those years related to some of these atmospheric conditions as well as ocean conditions. Nonetheless. This is the numbers that we're working off to see if the if the cloud brightening will be effective. Okay. <coughs> so, ah, yes, and so this is just a picture from a, a map from around the world looking at the amount of um, cloud condensation nuclei, and he's pointing out that in this in our region we have some of the lowest concentrations, which is again why this why this um, release. You know, 
releasing a new cloud um, condensation nuclei might be effective in our region. Okay, and uh, just to show it actually working in some cases, um, of course not from snow machines, but rather from um, release from ship tracks. Sometimes the aerosols lifted from there can leave uh, cloud trails, which are an example of this phenomenon. Okay, so now the bit that I'm a little bit more familiar with is that we what we did was we changed the forcing of the um, uh, the ERES model to incorporate this increased albedo, um, and so of course. Um, you know, as I showed earlier today, there's a whole lot of processes in the ERES model that, that work out the amount of uh, heat that's in the ocean, and so we've just added an extra term here uh, that's the reduced, the increased albedo. Um, and uh, and so here is the um, this is the average. Yeah, so this is now the change in forcing. Uh, in cloud, right, so it's, it's the actual change in cloud cover rather than the, the, the forcing on the ocean. And he's actually just showing it for the shallow regions here. Um, but you can see that it, the albedo has slightly increased and that that's spatially variable depending on the atmospheric conditions for how well that uh, those aerosols would have reacted with the prevailing uh, atmospheric conditions at that particular date. Um, and so, so this is basically the results slide, so there are more results that will be coming when he's um, finished having his baby and all other things. Um, so, um, so, this is the, so this is the ERES model that's been run. We're looking at an average change in temperature for January 2016. So of course we're hoping for a cooling. Um, and so in this case he actually applied it across the whole of the domain. Uh, but it's still, it's not evenly applied, it's applied depending on the effectiveness of the release of, of um, aerosols depending on the atmospheric conditions that prevail. And so you can see on the right, the temperature difference uh, in red was bef um, without, you know, the present conditions without the, um, uh, you know, that, without putting the increase in the albedo, and then the blue is the increase the decrease in temperature you get averaged over um, what well, knows at a particular site um, through that time. And so, you know, it's it's in the sort of, you know, 0.5 of a degree around about that, um, which, uh, you know, which is significant in this, and especially because of the scalability of this, of this, um, this idea. And so, um, so just to point out where we're going now, is we're going to apply, so that was looking at a broad scale, but we're also going to look at the effect on, on uh, smaller scales using the same relocatable model that we've used previously. And a um, particular reason to that is because it resolves symmetry better and will actually get a better effect of what we're going to have in the shallower waters uh, um, and effects on seabed temperature as well. Uh, so to summarise, um, yeah, regional cloud brightening shows good promise for bleaching mitigation. So far, um, that's even without including the effect of reduced solar radiation on the seabed. Um, cooling is of a time scale. Um, it's also a time scale dependent, but only of the order of two weeks. Yep, so it's happening pretty. It's a pretty quick response. Um, so obviously, we're not cooling the, the waters over a long period of time, um, and cooling is likely to be actually greater once we consider shallower waters um, and uh, yeah so regional application of marine cloud brightening coming back to his original point can only buy us time because we'd have to keep reapplying it continually to get a cooling effect um, but one of the good things about this that I would say too is that as far as a risk um, you know as, as far as interventions go the risks are quite low because you can just turn it off and uh, you'd never be increasing the albedo beyond, say, what it was in 2011 when we had a, a really, um, you know, really cloudy year. So it would be the type of interventions that you do would be well within the natural variability in any case. So um, thank Daniel for this work. <laughs> <laughs>